This episode contains naughty words. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back to another episode of Notes on Nonsense. For those of you who are coming to this new, I have for a long time been asked to do my own little episodes on my podcast. And for the longest time, I just thought nobody wants to hear from me. (laughs) And maybe you still don't. But many of you do, and in celebration of my new book that's coming out in December, The Year of No Nonsense, How a Little Less Bullshit Can Change Your Life, I decided to do little weekly shorts about what I think is bullshit. Now, these episodes are not rants or complaining, but they're meant to make you think, to make you think about what kind of nonsense might be in your life and prep you and get you all revved up for the new book. And the reason I am so excited about the new book is because I truly believe it's life-changing. Now, that's not ego talking. That's implementation talking. So this book is about what I did in my year of no nonsense to really make some substantial changes that have impacted me for the better. And I hope they'll do the same for you. So let's get started with today's episode. Today's episode, you got it, something that's bullshit. Today's episode is someday soon is bullshit. And what I mean about this. Okay, so I received an email from a potential client the other day, and it's not to call her out at all because I've received a lot of these emails. But it goes something like this. I want to make some changes. I want to do some big things, but... I need to wait until X, Y, and Z. I need to wait until the right time. I need to wait until my new job, you know, settles down. Or I need to wait, and this is my favorite, until everything calms down. So I have a question for you guys. How many of you have actually entered the point in your life where things have calmed down? (laughs) Because that's how, I mean, I think that's a really legitimate question because I am just wondering... If anyone has actually reached that point where they're like, oh, cool, things have calmed down. I'm ready to make substantial life changes. And the reason I ask this is because we're always waiting on someday soon. Mike Matthews in his book, Thinner, Leaner, Stronger, talks about how we really value our future selves. And I think it's really interesting because a lot of us think, okay, we don't have a lot of faith in ourselves. We don't think that we're going to accomplish what we want. We don't think we're going to accomplish all these things we dream. And we don't have a lot of faith in our future selves, but it's actually quite the opposite. We have a tremendous amount of faith and we put a lot of stock in our future self, but we're having trouble focusing and having faith in our current self. So in other words, we believe... I believe that the future Meredith Atwood is going to have a ton of willpower, a ton of self-control, and will get everything right when things calm down. The future Meredith Atwood will learn to control her binge eating. (laughs) She will learn to not be so hot-tempered and say things that she regrets to her husband, like last night. (laughs) The expert is in full-fledged, not speaking to me mode today because, you know, the future Meredith Atwood is going to be much nicer. The problem is we never quite get around to being the future version of our current self unless we start taking action in our current self. So I really liked that thought in his book because it's so true that we are placing stock in the future version of ourself, but we're not willing to open our eyes and see what's going on right now. And the truth of the matter is we don't have any promise of someday soon. We don't have any promise of tomorrow. All we have is right now. And so looking towards our goals and what we really want out of life, it needs to happen right now. The immediate steps have to be taken right now in order to get what we want because we think we have all this time in the world and at the same time we have to be extremely patient to accomplish anything and so we're in this crazy conundrum where we need to act right now we want it right now but we're also supposed to be patient and wait for everything to happen on the right terms the right time and with 
consistency, right? So I totally see why we're in this culture where we are totally confused, totally confused. Okay, do I take action now? Do I also be patient? Yes and yes. The problem is that we're not patient and we're also betting on our future self. So we've got it reversed. We need to bet on our current self and be patient if that makes sense. So my challenge for this particular episode of Notes on Nonsense is to stop the bleed of someday soon. And what I mean by that is that can be stop the bleed of I'm going to do better tomorrow. I mean, you should aim to do better tomorrow, right? But stop the bleed of I will start tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day that I will start to change my life. Tomorrow is the day I will start to, I will stop the bad habit and start the good habit. Or Monday, you guys, how many people have actually been successful at changing a habit on a Monday? I know there's got to be research out there about this. I feel like Monday is like the day that all good habits and good intentions go to die. But that's the day that our future self, all the value we put on our future self, that's the day we determine that she's going to make it happen. I don't know why. Definition of insanity. And my challenge for you is to also realize that the time is never going to be right to start anything. It's never going to be a good time to tell someone you love them when they don't know. It's never going to be a good time to start a new job. It's never going to be a good time to do anything. Timing is everything, and yet you can do nothing about it except plow forward with, with what you want and what you need now in order to set up your life for what you want. So I'll give you a good example. Um, for most of my life, as many of you know that follow me, I have struggled with my weight, right? Right. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, this story again. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I have, you know, I've done the calorie counting. I've done the points, the macros. I've done the counting where I'm given a bucket of things that I'm allowed. And then I eat out of that bucket of calories and macros. And then it's all very whatever it is. Okay. I've had a hard time sticking to parameters because it's too much freedom. And I'll explain that in a minute. But I started a meal plan the week before we moved across the country from Kansas City to Massachusetts. So a meal plan being here are the six meals I'm going to eat every day. This is the time I'm going to eat them. This is what's food, what food is in these containers. And this is what I'm doing. I did this the week before we moved. Now, I was driving from Kansas City to Massachusetts with a bearded dragon lizard, and it was going to take me two days, like 24 hours of driving with a lizard that I had to smuggle into a hotel. <laughs> so I had to prepare two days worth of food, so 12 meals, and deal with this lizard, smuggle him in, and eat every so often, find a microwave, you know, all these things, right? And that would probably be deemed like if you could take a questionnaire and ask, would that be a good time to make a substantial change in your eating habits? Would that be a good time to make any changes at all? Would that be a good time to carry a, a cooler full of stuff? to try and find a microwave. In the first night I got there, um, I forgot where I stopped, somewhere in Pennsylvania, Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, I shorted, I, I shorted the hotel, like my, the fuse blew several times while I was microwaving. So I laughed because it was not a good time to start a substantial life change habit that is meal planning and eating on a meal plan. That was the first time I'd ever done that. Um, despite all my dieting, I've never just like stuck to a plan plan. And it was really interesting because I gained a lot of insight about myself. And I'll share that with you right now. So the, most of the insight that I gained was the fact that the future self, <laughs> the future Meredith really had a lot of confidence in her ability to get her act together someday in the future. But I had not taken a lot of um, emphasis and belief in my current self. So by doing this meal plan on the road with the lizard, with my avocado and my plastic knife, <laughs> that's a story, you guys, Cut an, cutting an avocado with a plastic knife, um, I realized that I was capable of so, so, so much more than I had allowed myself to admit. I said, you know, that would be really hard. And that's going to be another episode. Why hard is bullshit. 
<laughs> but it felt like, oh my gosh, that's going to be really challenging. What if I fail? I mean, the ridiculous stuff that we will tell ourselves that we're going to fail about, really think about it sometimes. It is so stupid. Stupid. I just needed to eat. I needed to eat six meals. They were in containers and I needed to put them in my belly and then clean the container for the next time. You know what I mean? It was really quite simple. But when you ask someone, hey, should you travel across the country and plan your meals with a lizard? People will be like, why are you, why are you doing that? Just, just eat and quit worrying about it. But for me, it was the time, the week before I moved, I had it. I was like, I am done with this current state that I'm in, which was binge eating and not sticking to my own promises that I kept making to myself. So when is a good time to keep the promises that you want to make to yourself? When is a good time to change your life? Now, right? The fresh hell right now. And that is what I learned. So by doing the exercise of the meal plans across the country, I learned that one, it was really not that difficult. It required an extra trip into the hotel. It required some ice. <laughs> it required a lot of... Um, prep on the front end. And when I say a lot, like we use words like a lot, a lot, but it took about an hour to prep the food like in containers for my two day travel. I look at the time save it would have taken me to eat, stop, eat, find food over the course of two days on a drive. So I actually probably saved time. So I learned that if I just prepare and then I go, I have this stuff to eat. I have no obstacles in my way. I have created, like the, the big obstacle is to eat healthy on the road. Well, you can get away with the, you can do away with the obstacle by looking at the obstacle. And so the thing I learned was that it's really not that hard to start right now to change your current situation. But for some reason, we truly believe that the Meredith or the Sally or the Fred of tomorrow is going to be better than the one today. And I don't know where that comes from. I don't, I, I don't think we really trust ourselves in the present because of how much we're suffering, because of how much we're hurting, because of how hard life feels at this moment. We're having a hard time trusting that our current self is capable of great things. So we put all of our stock, like Michael Matthews says, we put all of our stock in our future self in hopes that that person will be worthy of the success that comes from it perhaps but also that person will be worthy of standing in the shoes that say i made a promise i stuck to that promise here's my result go me we are so slow to give ourselves any credit and i know this from coaching women we are the worst i coach one woman who is a very successful executive very and then her self-talk around like working out and her food choices, you would think she's the biggest loser on the planet because of the way she feels about th this little area of her life. And I'm like, woman, <laughs> you are an incredibly successful, strong, smart, powerful. Like, let me get out my adjective role and read it to you. And she's all these things. And she's also all those things when it comes to food and exercise and everything else. She just has more faith that her future version of herself will be able to get that together than the one that employs those tactics every single day in other areas. In my book, The Year of No Nonsense, which is coming out in December, I talk about resourcefulness and how if you don't have, if you don't think you have resources at your fingertips, then you're going to always think you don't have enough. We all have incredible resources at our fingertips that are right in our body right now that we possess. No matter what you do, no matter who you are, you are getting through life. <laughs> you are driving cars, functioning, going to the grocery store, speaking to people, getting your kids God knows where all the time. That is a job. If you can navigate a, a schedule of like, teenagers or toddlers, you have resources and we fail to call on those resources for ourselves when it comes to something as simple as can I meal prep so I can drive across the country. And when you hear it, like when I say that out loud, I think I really do come up with a ton of ridiculous excuses for why I can't do something when I should just do it. The time I'm spending complaining about the situation, I can just take some action. So my challenge for you on this Notes on Nonsense is someday soon is bullshit. And I don't care how soon someday soon is, but what you have is now. 
you have today, you have the next hour. You don't even know if you have today. And that's some scary for you. But I don't want to like send anyone down like a triggering rabbit hole of that. But what we have is right now. What can you do right this second to eradicate the someday soon idea? What can you do right in this moment, today, this second, to take on Monday, I will start out of your vocabulary, vocabulary forever. What can you do to change someday soon to right now I'm going to, today I will, tonight this is going to happen. These are the words. This is how you, you twist it around to make it work for you. Take hope out of the equation. Take someday soon I will out of the equation and use the words today I will, tonight I will, right now I will, and just go do that. And I talked about this on an Instagram live last week, and um, I think it was really helpful for some people. So I'm going to close with this. When I think I run out of time for things, like when I'm looking at my day schedule and I'm thinking, how am I going to get all of this done? How am I going to get the kids here, get the kids here, finish this book, do this podcast, coach these clients, talk on the phone, talk to these people? How am I going to get all of this done in one day? I used to say that all the time. I don't have the time. How am I going to do this? I don't have the time. I don't have the time. What I did, and I may have heard this somewhere, so maybe I shouldn't take credit for it, but I don't know where to give credit to. So <laughs> it's just a pure disclaimer that I don't really know, but I'm not, I may not have made this up. <laughs> I may have, I may not have. It's one of those weeks. But what I have started to say to myself when I feel the regurgitation of I don't have time, what I say to myself is I have all the time I need to accomplish exactly what I need to do. It's the abundance mindset. It's the resource mindset. It's the idea that we have everything within us, everything around us that we need to be successful in what we want to do. So when you find yourself saying, next week I'll do this, or when things calm down, I'll take this step to change my life forever, stop it and say, right now I will blank. Right now I will take this step today to change my life forever. Thank you guys for listening.